I talk a lot about using real ear measurement to ensure that you're actually meeting your hearing loss prescription. But what is a hearing loss prescription? Well, in this video, I'm gonna give you a foundational understanding of what a hearing loss prescription is and what the most common ones are. Coming up. Hi guys, Cliff Olson, Doctor of Audiology and founder of Applied Hearing Solutions in Anthem, Arizona. And on this channel, I cover a bunch of hearing related information to help make you a better informed consumer. So if you're into that, make sure you hit that subscribe button. And don't forget to click the bell to receive a notification every time I post a new video. The first question that I ask myself before recommending a hearing aid to a patient is, will this hearing aid be able to meet the prescription for this individual's level of hearing loss? Only then can I focus on other features inside of those hearing devices. But what is a hearing loss prescription and why is it so important? To keep things simple, I want you to think of a hearing loss prescription as being very similar to an eyeglass prescription or a contact prescription. You can't just take the same eyeglass prescription or the same contact prescription and give it to anybody no matter what their type of vision loss is. That contact or that eyeglass has to be to the exact specifications of that individual's vision loss. Well, the same thing goes with hearing loss prescriptions. You can't just take one prescription or one level of amplification and give it to everybody with a different type of hearing loss. To explain it on a basic level, a hearing loss prescription is simply a calculation of the ideal amount of amplification required at each individual frequency to restore audibility of certain sounds. For example, if you have more hearing loss in the high frequencies, you would require more amplification to restore sounds you are missing in these ranges, compared to frequencies that you have less of a hearing loss in. The amount of amplification required in these ranges depends on a variety of factors, not just the level of loss alone. This is one of the reasons why wearing a pre-programmed hearing aid does not provide the maximum amount of benefit, because individual variations including hearing loss levels are not taken into account. There are several different hearing loss prescriptive methods that are used to determine the right amount of amplification for you, but I'll go over some of the more common ones. And the first one is the NALR, which also stands for National Acoustics Laboratory Revised. This prescriptive method was developed by the National Acoustics Laboratory in Australia and is designed for linear hearing aids. Essentially, a linear hearing aid is a device that will amplify different levels of input by the exact same amount. Let me give you an example. If someone's yelling at you, that sound is much louder coming into your hearing aid than it is if someone were whispering to you. But the hearing aids will actually apply the exact same amount of amplification to both of those sounds. This can actually run the risk of making loud sounds being too loud for you and soft sounds not being loud enough to become audible. However, there are a bunch of people who still use nonlinear hearing aids. Most of them have been wearing hearing aids for a long time. They're used to that particular type of prescriptive method, so they continue to use it. But it is not something that is very commonly used today. Second is the NAL-NL2, which also stands for National Acoustics Laboratory Nonlinear Second Version. This prescription was also developed by the National Acoustics Laboratory in Australia, but is intended for nonlinear hearing aids. A nonlinear hearing aid applies a different amount of amplification based on the input level that it receives. So in the same scenario that I just explained to you, if someone's yelling at you, it's going to give that amount of input less amplification than someone who's whispering to you. What this allows you to do is actually reduce the amount of volume for these really loud level sounds and increase the amount of volume for these low level sounds, essentially keeping everything inside of your comfortably audible range. The NAL-NL2 is an updated version of the NAL-NL1 and is intended to keep speech intelligible and overall loudness comfortable. Third is the DSL-5, which stands for Desired Sensation Level Version 5. This method was largely developed based on the need for a verifiable prescriptive method for children and infants. While adults can use this prescriptive method, it generally is reserved for those younger individuals. The reason that you would use the DSL for these individuals is because children actually require and prefer more amplification than what adults do. Additionally, since infants and young children can't articulate whether or not audibility has been restored, it is even more critical to do real ear measurement and real ear coupler difference on this particular population. As the name would suggest, we are on version 5 of the DSL, so it could be updated again in the future just like any prescriptive method. And fourth is the proprietary manufacturer's fitting algorithm. Every hearing aid manufacturer also has their own proprietary prescriptive method. Phonak, for instance, has the adaptive Phonak Digital. Signia uses the NX Fit, Resound uses Audiogram Plus, and Oticon uses a VAC Plus. 
One of the major problems with these proprietary manufacturer prescriptions is that they're more focused on initial song quality than they are restoring audibility, which means that you could be enjoying the way that the hearing aids are sounding, but they're not actually giving you the full amount of benefit. The second problem with using these proprietary methods is that they're not verifiable using real ear measurement. Because every individual's ear canal size and shape are different, you could have two individuals with identical hearing losses, but need different amounts of amplification in different areas to ensure that audibility has been restored. If you can't verify these prescriptions using real ear measurement, then you really have no clue what that sound is doing inside of your ear canal. The calculation of a hearing loss prescription is way more complex than just amplifying all sounds. Fortunately, we have the National Acoustics Laboratory and other researchers who develop these hearing loss prescriptions to ensure that you're getting the right amount of sound for your particular type of hearing loss. And as long as you have your hearing loss prescription verified using real ear measurement, you can be assured that you're getting the right amount of amplification so you can hear your best. So the next time that you get a set of hearing aids programmed, make sure to ask your hearing care professional which hearing loss prescription they're using and why, and of course, make sure that they verify it using real ear measurement. That's it for this video. If you have any questions, leave them in the comment section below. If you liked the video, please share it. And if you wanna see other videos just like this one, make sure you hit that subscribe button. I'll see you next time.